Hi, my name is Rebecca Vidito and I'm one of the ISU Extension field agronomists. And with me today I've got uh, my colleague Christina Tabakhorst, who's one of our egg engineers. And today we're going to be talking about taking the late spring soil nitrate sample test. So with the, the late spring soil nitrate test, um, the timing of when we take that test and the, the depth of how deep we go is really important to make sure that when we get those soil sample results back that they're accurate. So the corn needs to be, or should be between six to 12 inches and tall. As far as the depth goes, it's different than when we test for phosphorus or potassium or pH, where that's typically a six inch sampling depth. For the late spring soil nitrate test, we want that to be a 12 inch sampling depth. And so one of the things uh, I find helpful is I will actually mark on my soil probe where that is. So when I go to take my soil sample, I know how deep to go in. Hi, I'm Christina Tabakhorst, the Ag Engineer for Southeast Iowa. And to continue, so for the late spring soil nitrate test, uh, we really want our sample area to be uniform um, in terms of the nitrogen fertilization history. And also we want that area to be able to be uniformly managed um, for our nitrogen application if required or if shown to be required by the late spring soil nitrate test. So a good recommendation would be to have a minimum of one sample per 20 acres or you know five sample areas within 100 acres. Or you could do you know a finer grid sample, 10 acre grids or something like that. But uh, maybe for the first time you're sampling for the late spring soil nitrate test, you could start with the, the one sample per 20 acres. And then within um, every sample, we want subsamples to be collected. They should be within um, random locations throughout that, within that sample area. And um, we want to make sure that we're taking into account the um, location of any past bands of fertilizer or manure. Um, and I'll show you that next. But we want at least um, somewhere between 16 to 24 subsamples to be mixed within um, a single sample. What we want to do is as we're randomly finding locations throughout our sample area, we want to um, rotate from going at a couple different uh, locations with, within two rows. So the first location would be within the row and then an eighth of the way into the row um, and then continue an eighth of the way increments all the way through that in between that row as we're randomly moving throughout the field. So we'll rotate that position every time we move to a new random location. So one, we'll, we'll start um, with the first eighth of the way through the row location. So we'll go an eighth of the way into the row and to collect a sample down to that 12 inches. And then these conditions are pretty good for collecting soil samples. Um, something to look out for would be conditions that are excessively wet in which um, the sample is really going to compress or it's going to be really hard to collect a sample. We've got our 24 subsamples here in the bucket and um, I just wanted to show an example of what it looks like. We really want our sample bags to be labeled with some kind of sample ID number um, and a field identification. So we have here ISU field. Uh, one and sample ID one so that when you get results back um, you'll know exactly where that sample came from. So we've got a pretty full bucket here of you know 24 subsamples that we collected randomly throughout our, our sample location. So really what we want to do is break up the cores really well. So you know once you get all the clods broken up and you get it really well mixed that's when we want to collect a sample out of this. This is what we'll send to the lab then, a really representative um, sample from our sample location. So once you have all of your samples collected for the field or the fields that you're going to be taking the late spring soil nitrate samples in, we want to send them to a commercial certified lab. Most commercial certified labs will offer the late spring soil nitrate test. 
If you're not going to be sending them in right away to the to the lab, we recommend that we do put them in the fridge or the freezer just to help keep those samples so um, we don't see any conversion going on there. And also if you're out and about during the day collecting those samples, if it's going to be warmer out, um, we don't want them you know, sitting on the dash of the pickup or anything like that. So we'd recommend putting them in a cooler just to keep those samples uh, cooler there. And then once you send them to the lab and the lab gets you the results back, we have the Iowa State publication 31, crop 3140 that we can use to help interpret those soil test results and figure out how much nitrogen or if any nitrogen we need to apply. You can also contact your local extension field agronomist or your local egg engineer if you have any questions about interpreting those as well.